Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining. So we have some huge news from Dodge. News that is not only huge, but I think sad and kind of inevitable, unfortunately. And that is that Dodge and Ram brand CEO Tim Kaniscus is retiring after 32 years. I mean, we don't know the real story if it's really a retirement because he's, you know, he's uh, of retirement age because he's really not. I think he's in like 57, but he is leaving Dodge. He started with Dodge and like, or with, with Chrysler Brands Mopar in 1992. And he is an iconic figure in the car world. And one of the reasons is he's a real car guy just like us. So it's amazing that, you know, one of us has been running Dodge brands rather than some bean counters, which, you know, bean counters accountants have been notorious for running the car companies for years. You know, GM is a prime example where you get these corporate types that want to save a few pennies here and there so that, you know, the, the unfortunately, the excitement goes away in many of the cars. But it's sad because Tim was a Mopar fanatic like us. And he's kind of the one that kept Dodge true to its muscle car roots. You know, even taking steps in with, with the RST brand, the, the RST, let me try that again, SRT, to make sure it was like the hot brand in muscle cars. And culminating with the Hellcat powered cars, which began in, in the 2015 model year. I remember in 2014 when they, they announced the Hellcat and it was just so exciting. And Tim Kaniscus, he was the front man and he was putting out these unbelievably exciting videos, exciting for us car guys that, that just w made us want to buy these cars. I was a Mopar guy my whole life. I had many, many, many Mopar muscle cars. And the one I had had for, since 1989 was a, a 72 Cuda 340 four-speed Hurst. And I never thought I'd sell that. I bought that in 1989 in Los Angeles. I drove it cross country to the East Coast. I moved back to Los Angeles. I brought it back out there, had it for years, never thought I'd sell it. And when the Hellcat Power Challenger was announced, it was the natural evolution of the muscle car. And I didn't feel bad selling my Cuda, even though I had so many great memories and it was such a, such a great car. And that was that was Caniscus that really fought to make those those Hellcat powered Chargers and Challengers what they are. They were just unbelievable cars. And Tim was probably the driving force trying to stop the European overlords at Stellantis, people like Carlos Tavares, from homogenizing and electrifying Dodge. I, I'm sure he, you know, fought it kicking and screaming. And then probably when he saw that the EV nonsense was just inevitable, he even insisted, I'm sure it was him that insisted that Dodge stay true to its muscle car roots, not really being an EV. People like me aren't going to buy that, but he made sure that he was trying to market it as an EV muscle car, you know, the, the Charger Daytona Banshee, which will be coming out next year. But, you know, Tim Kaniscus is considered the father of the high-performance Hellcat models, and he's even considered the unofficial spokesman for the American muscle car over the past 10 years. And again, he started as a car guy. He was, he was some kind of like an intern with Chrysler starting in 1992, and he just worked his way up. He was, you know, he was president and CEO of Dodge and SRT brands as far back as as, as 2014, you know, before the Hellcat motor was announced and the Hellcat, the Hellcat powered vehicles. And he was involved with, with, with Maserati and as well as FCA Fiat Chrysler automobiles. So he was, he was really involved the whole time. But again, he was involved given that, that muscle car slant that he had in his head, just as we would have, if we were in his position. But it's just, you know, it was just fantastic. You know, during his tenure, he just, he, he reestablished Dodge as the quintessential American muscle car brand, you know, with vehicles such as the Challenger and Charger uh, Hellcats 
And then he took it, he, he, he again, he was constantly taking it a step further in 2018 by announcing the demon. Who thought after the Hellcat powered vehicles were announced that there'd be something even better? So he, he announced in 2018 the demons, the 840 horsepower demon. And then after that, the, the Hellcat red eyes, which were basically a slightly detuned version of the demon motors. But again, something that, that sort of the average guy, if they've saved up for years and years, could actually buy. And, and then culminating in the, the swan song of the Dodge muscle car, and that is the Demon 170 this past year. So, you know, that this, you know, in my view was Tim Kaniska. So he just did a great job. And unfortunately, when Stellantis took over and Carlos Tavares, who's, you know, he's a European, Belgian, a Belgian guy who has that European philosophy when it comes to cars. He's into the green movement. He's into electrifying everything. And Tim Kaniskas, I'm sure, was fighting it the whole way and did the best he could. And then when eventually that was the end of sort of the, the Hemi V8 Dodge muscle car, I'm sure it was him that said, we need to keep you know, the muscle car heritage of Dodge alive. And he's probably the one that really pushed for the the Daytona Charger, the Charger Daytona Banshee, and the muscle EVs, which, again, without an internal combustion V8, what is it really? But I'm sure it was just too much for Tim. I'm sure he fought so hard along the way and just said, no, nah, that's it. I'm done. And he basically took his retirement. I'm sure he had some kind of a really great retirement package, and that's it. So now, what's going to become of Dodge now that Tim Kaniskas is gone? Not just Dodge, but some of the other brands. Well, Kaniskas is going to be replaced as CEO of the Ram brand by, by the person who is currently the CEO of Chrysler, the Chrysler brand, and that's Christine Fuel. Fuel, I'm not sure pronouncing her name right, but again, she's going to take over. And she, as far as I know, isn't a car person. She is just a kind of a top executive that really she she came out of Honeywell Safety and Product Productivity Solutions. So she's a corporate executive. She's not a car person, which is what Kaniskas was, and he worked his way up. So again, she was into, you know, corporate efficiency and supply chain and all that kind of stuff. She she was also formerly at Johnson Controls and Honeywell and quote had a strong track record of delivering prop delivering profitable growth through integrated products, software and services. Not a car person. Now, the guy who's taking over at Dodge as CEO of Dodge is Tim uh, I'm sorry, Matt McAleer, Matt McAleer. And he's been in charge of Dodge sales operations for the past at least couple of years. So I'm sure he's been working very closely with Tim Kaniskas, probably hopefully working under his wing. And he may be a, 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 he may be a car guy, not sure exactly. But again, really, Carlos Tavares and Stellantis are determining what happens to the Dodge brand. And Carlos Tavares, as I mentioned, is not a is not an American muscle car kind of a guy. He doesn't give a damn about the car buying public in the United States, in my opinion. He doesn't give a damn about Dodge or its muscle car heritage. And he wants to ram down this, you know, going fully EV down our throats. And even given the fact that it looks like the EV market is crashing. He also doesn't care, in my opinion, about the American auto worker. Because, you know, he recently made this supposedly great deal with the, the United Auto Workers. And it was, it was really announced as this great deal and, and great strides made by the UAW union workers and so forth. But pretty much, I, I believe he made that deal in bad faith, my opinion, because shortly thereafter, he announced huge layoffs, huge layoffs at, at uh, Chrysler Chrysler production facilities, and he's moving a lot of that production outside of the United States. Not only production facilities, but engineering as well. He's, he has announced that there are going to be huge layoffs 
in United States based engineers, the the you know the Dodge engineering team, and that they're going to go offshore for that. A lot of engineering will happen in India and in in uh, East Asia, as well as other offshore engineering engineering facilities that make about half the amount of money that engineers in the United States make. So that's what he's more concerned about. He, again, is concerned with cost-cutting and workforce reduction in the United States. Also, as the EV market has been crashing, he's he, Carlos Tavares, has, has just made a deal with Leap Motor in China to sell Chinese-made EVs throughout the world uh, in conjunction with Stellantis. So they'll probably be under the Stellantis brands and not in the United States, but in most of the other the other countries in Europe, in Mexico and so forth, they're going to sell Chinese made EVs under the Stellantis brands. So this is this is given the fact that we have news reports daily about the EV market crashing, JD Power just came out with their 2024 U.S. electric vehicle consideration study, and it was released confirming that new car buyers are less likely to consider EVs now compared to the past few years. So that's what's happening. Is is Stellantis and Carlos Tavares considering maybe going back on the all-EV philosophy and plan? Doesn't look that way. We'll see what happens. News came out out of Ford today. CEO, Ford CEO, Jim Farley, uh, yes, related to Chris Farley, believe it or not, he's some kind of a cousin, says that the Ford Mustang, not the not the Mach-E, but the regular Mustang, will never be a battery electric vehicle. That's a change because in the early days of Ford, uh, it, it, where they were discussing the pivot towards all electric vehicles, it was kind of assumed that everything was going to go all electric, including the iconic Ford Mustang. But now that is not going to happen. It is never going to be offered as a battery electric, at least in the foreseeable future. So it will be continue to be an internal combustion engine, or they may move to hybrid, but still with an internal combustion engine. A- another big piece of news out of Ford in Europe, they are ditching their, their 2030 plan, which, w- which stated that by 2030, the entire passenger vehicle lineup in Europe would be all EV. But now that has changed, and they will continue to sell hybrid and gas-powered vehicles for the foreseeable future in Europe. So that is fantastic. Now, there may be one other thing that Tim Kaniskas, I think, was the one that pushed this, and that is that the Hemi V8 was scheduled to in production at the end of the 2024 model year. But the current model Dodge Durango has been extended into 2025. I mentioned that in my last video. You can watch that. And with the 2024, now moving into 2025 Durango model, it is also moving into 2025 still with the Hemi V8, with the 5.7 liter V8, and believe it or not, in 2025 with the Hellcat motor. The 392 supposedly is being discontinued, but we still have a Hemi V8 going into 2025. 2025. I think this was a brilliant move in my mind by Tim Kaniskas because he probably saw the writing on the wall that it's possible that after the November election, the Biden administration may be out and a new administration, the Trump administration, may be back in. That's good news for the internal combustion engine. It's good news if you don't like the EV mandate, because that will probably be out the window. And it's good news for for energy in the United States. Gasoline prices should be less. Production should be up. And given the fact that we're still going to be making at Dodge, the Hemi V8, if things pivot in November, then Dodge could pivot as well and say, you know what, we're going to continue to make the, the Hemi V8, and maybe we'll even put that in the in the charger, the current the current generation or the new current generation uh, charger. So we'll see what happens. Is that still a possibility with Tim Kaniskas gone? I don't know. There's no question though that with Tim Kaniskas retiring from Dodge, this is the end of an era, and hopefully it's not the last nail in the coffin for Dodge. 
So there's a lot you could comment on. Please make comments down below. Let me know what you think. Also, if you haven't already done so, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. Those things help a lot. Take care. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining.